the ASA algorithm is probably one of the most well-known, but also one of the most important pathfinding algorithms. It is used in graph theory, but also in a lot of games. In this video, I would like to explain the basics of the algorithm and kind of provide you with a starting kit for programming it yourself. I will also demonstrate the algorithm itself with some programs I wrote myself, and you can also find the source code of some of these programs on my GitHub page. Alright, so how does the ASA algorithm work? First, some essentials. Um, the goal of the algorithm is to find the fastest path from A to B in a field, for example. So we start out with a field, which kind of just is a two-dimensional array, uh, which is filled with different field codes. For example, path is equal to zero and obstacles are equal to one. And we also know the start and target field of the path. So in code form, the field might look like this, just a two-dimensional byte array. And in field form, it will look like this. So empty fields are um, visualized in dark blue, and obstacles are visualized in some sort of brighter blue. And the start field is red and the target field is green. I will continue to visualize the algorithm with this technique throughout the video. All right, so the basic structure of the ASA algorithm looks something like this. So I'm, I'm going to explain the basic structure without explaining the specific terms of the algorithm, which I will explain later. So we start off by adding the start field to the open list. I will explain what the open list is later. Then we take the cheapest element off of these, uh, this open list and add it to the closed list. Then we'll calculate the cost of all neighbors of this field and add them to the open list as well and remember their parent, which basically is just the current field. As long as the target is not on the open list and the open list is not empty, we continue with step one. So this is basically just a, a big loop here, which loops from three back to one and starts over again. So what is this open and closed list? The open list, which I'll always visualize in green, is basically all fields that are considered for the path or which we are currently considering for the path. The closed list, which I'll always visualize in blue, is basically fields that don't need to be examined anymore because we already examined them. So after the first step, like, like we said, the starting field is added to the open list, then immediately taken from the open list and added to the closed list. This is why it's already blue in this image. Then all the neighbors are examined and added to the open list, which is why they are green here. Then we also remember their parents. This is this kind of arrow that's pointing to the starting field because they were added to the open list through the start starting field. And then we continue with the cost calculation of the, these neighbors. So how does the cost calculation work or what is the cost calculation? Basically, it follows a very simple formula, which is F costs are equal to G costs plus H costs. G costs are the cost of walking from the start field to the current field. So for example, we can say that these are just numbers we, we make up, that all straights cost 10 points to travel and all diagonals cost 14 points to travel, which is just calculated from diagonals being the root of two longer and root of two times 10 is 14. H costs are the heuristic costs. So they are estimated costs from the current field to the target. Um, there are different methods of estimating these costs. There is the Manhattan method, the diagonal method, or the Euclidean distance. Um, in this video and in my, my source code, I 
use the Manhattan method just because it's the most simple and probably also the most naive method of estimating the costs. So how does the Manhattan method work? Like I said, it's the most simple and naive heuristic. We simply ignore a field type, whether it's a path or an obstacle, and simply calculate the cost as if we were walking straight to the target, but we don't use diagonals, so we just walk in straight lines. In code form, this could look like something like this, where we just multiply the straight cost, in, in our example it's 10, times the difference in x coordinates and the difference in in y coordinates. So for for this example we start here and we count the, the fields we need to go to the target which are just 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So the h cost is 9 times 10 which is 90. Another example for cost calculation um, so we calculate the cost of this neighbor and this neighbor. We start with, with this neighbor. The G costs are simply the cost from the start field to the current field. So in this case, it's just a straight, which we determined as a 10. The H cost is determined with the Manhattan method. Like we said, just one, two, three um, fields straight. And we just ignore obstacles which is 3 times 10, our straight cost, which is 30. And the overall costs, so the, the F costs, would just be G costs plus H costs, which is 40. Now for the lower right neighbor, we calculate the H costs by simply adding up the fields again, 1, 2, 3, 4, multiply them by the straight cost, which is 40. Then the G costs are simply Again, simply the cost from walking from the start field to the current field, which is a diagonal, so it's 14. And the overall cost, the F cost, would be 14 plus 40, which is 54. Okay, so now that we know the basic terms of the algorithm, what the open and the closed list is, and how to calculate the costs, now let's have a closer look at the basic structure that we already looked at earlier. So after we added the star field to the open list, we take the cheapest element, so the element with the lowest costs that we calculated, from the open list and add it to the closed list. So we can already realize here that in every iteration of this loop, we will have to find the element with the lowest cost in this open list, which makes the open list a priority queue, basically a queue where we always know the cheapest element. A priority queue is best implemented with a binary min heap, which I'm not going to explain in this video. However, if you would like to see an implementation of a ASTER algorithm using a binary heap, you can simply look at my source code, which is linked in the video description. After we've added this field to the open list, we calculate the, the cost of all neighbors of this field. And also remember this field as the parent of these neighbors. The next step is examining the neighbors. We look through all eight neighbors as long as they are walkable and not on the closed list yet. So this is also the, the basic functionality of the closed list. The only reason we have a closed list is to prevent us from getting into an endless loop. So we use the closed list to determine which fields we don't have to examine anymore. Then we calculate the costs of these neighbors, add them to the open list and remember their parent, which is basically just a field that they are the neighbor of. If they are already on the open list, we recalculate the costs and update them and their parent if they are cheaper than what was already saved on the open list. And then step three is kind of just the breaking conditions for this loop. So if the target is on the open list, the path has already been found. This would look something like this. So we got our start field, our target field, and the target field has already been added to the open list. But what is the path now? We basically just trace the parents backwards, back to the starting field, and that is our path. 
This is also the reason why we have to remember the parents of each field, because we're going to use them later to determine the path. So in our case, the path will look like this. Because the parent of this field is this field, the parent of this field is this field, and so on. The second breaking condition deals with another case. If the target is not on the open list, but the open list is empty, then this must mean that there is no path. So for example, the target is simply unreachable. So in this example, the target is surrounded by obstacles, and there simply is no path that leads from here to here. So what does the EAS algorithm do in this case? Well, it's the worst case possible. It simply examines every reachable field and then realizes there must be no path. So this is the case where the EAS algorithm will take the longest. But now for some practical demonstrations of the ASA algorithm. First of all, a Java program that I've also used in my video to visualize the algorithm. Here you can place obstacles yourself and kind of toy around with the algorithm. You can also place the start and target and when you're happy with your obstacles, you can start finding the path. With pressing space, you can run through the algorithm step by step, while pressing enter will finish the algorithm. So in this case, our algorithm has found the path and it will look like something like this. Like explained in the video, all fields that are added to the open list are surrounded by green, while fields on the open list are surrounded by blue. The costs are visualized in the corners of a field. The F costs are in the left upper corner, the G costs in the lower left corner, and the H costs are in the right lower corner. So in this example, the costs of this field are calculated with a straight for G costs 10. H costs are simply the fields in a straight line multiplied by the straight costs. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 fields multiplied by 10, which is 110, and the F costs are simply G costs plus H costs, 120. Now let's walk through the algorithm for a bit and look at this field for example. The G costs are calculated with the costs that we would take from walking from the start field using our path that we determined until now to this current field. So in our case it will be just straight, but 8 of them, so the G costs would be 80. And the H costs would simply be calculated again with Manhattan, 1, 2, 3, 4 fields, 40, so the F costs would be 120. This little game uses the ACE algorithm for its enemies. The enemies utilize the ACE algorithm to find their path from their current position to the player. With the in-game debug mode, you can also visualize this path node for node. If the player moves, the enemies will simply recalculate their paths. I've also written a small demo program which demonstrates the A-star algorithm. In the class A-star, you can find a method findPath, which takes a star position and a target position and finds the fastest path using the A-star algorithm. In this demo, I utilize a binary heap for the open list, which is found in the binary heap class. I've also written classes for the field itself, for each node in this field, and a class for storing the final path. You can find the source code of this demo on my GitHub page. You can find links to these programs as well as the source code in the video annotations as well as in the video description. And I've also linked some useful sources in the description for getting to know the ACER algorithm and also some advanced techniques for using the ACER algorithm. Alright, this is it. So thank you very much for watching and I hope this video helped you in some way.